right, y'all. So I'm really excited today because I just finished recording a video that you are now about to watch um, featuring my friend, Jessany. She's an INFJ. She studied theology in school. Me and her were really close. We actually had a video together um, called Unleashing the Inner Phoenix or something like that. Um, but yeah, she's absolutely amazing. And I just want to warn all of you that in this video, we talk about a lot of controversial thoughts and opinions and philosophies and everything. Um, and I just want to give that, I mean, I gave a disclaimer in the video, but I just want to give a double disclaimer because this is actually the first time um, that I'm publicly sharing where my current stance in my Christian faith is. Um, and it's kind of scary because, you know, I don't, I don't want the, the people like, oh no, he's falling away. He's, he's a false teacher. All of that mess. Like, I don't need that. Um, so I highly advise that you listen to the full conversation because it actually takes a really interesting turn. Um, and, uh, at this point, I'm not sure if I'm breaking it into part one, part two, because the conversation ended up being about two hours. Uh, but all I want to say is I hope that y'all enjoy. Please be easy on your boy. Um, and uh, yeah, I guess that's the biggest thing. Please, if you can, even if not all in one sitting, I, I guess I don't really advise you do it all in one sitting. but. Even if you have to like take breaks and stuff, please try to watch and listen to the whole conversation because this is one of those conversations where if you only take fragments, um, you can really get the wrong idea about stuff. So yeah, without further ado, let's get back to the video. All right, everyone. I'm here with Jessany Morris, um, my fellow INFJ friend. Um, some of you may already know her. We did a video a few years ago, um, pretty much Unleashing the Phoenix. If you haven't seen that one yet, you should definitely go and check it out. Jessney is an absolutely intelligent, brilliant, like I can gas her up like a lot right now, but like seriously. Oh yes, we are, don't get <laughs> But seriously though, like we, we really, really deeply connect and I'm excited because this is actually, as y'all can see from the intro, this is a Candid Concept video. It's also going on the Candid Concept podcast. Um, and I guess I should put the disclaimers out here that we will be talking about things that might have you, especially if you're a Christian, question a lot of your you know, beliefs. Um, and this is not intended to dissuade anybody. It's just intended to be an open discussion between me and Jessany, who's also um, a Christian. Um, and even if anything, me being vulnerable about where I currently stand on a lot of things um, and trying to just figure things out with just me. And I told her like right before we uh, started recording and everything that she does not have a job to rescue me. Um, a lot of the saints probably just went like, oh man. <laughs> and honestly, I uh, like, I also want to put it out there that I, number one, still believe that Jesus Christ is the son of God who lived a perfect life, came, died for our sins and resurrected on the third day. So just, you know, huge disclaimer. I still believe in the Holy Spirit, still believe in God. So you good. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I still communicate with Jesus, you know, but this is literally like I've been in a state where I've been questioning a lot of my beliefs. Um, and I like that Jessany said right before we started that she has come into a position where she is okay with questioning these beliefs. Um, so yeah, that's just the disclaimers. And now to kind of like lay the foundation for the rest of this uh, conversation. How did this even all start? Well, I love this um, YouTuber and his name is Clay Arnau. Um, if you guys haven't heard of him, I should definitely go check him out. He's also an INFJ um, and he has some really dope videos. Um, and honestly speaking, I think out of everybody on YouTube, 
he is someone that, at least in my opinion, my videos most closely resemble, like his style and format and everything. He definitely has a little bit more of like a high tech, you know, um, stuff that he uses to like record and background, whatever. Um, and one day I might get to that level. He definitely also has like a lot more followers, etc. But the way that he thinks, like I, I just came across him like maybe about a year, year and a half ago, thanks to my friend Stephanie. Um, but he, uh, the way that he thinks, like a lot of his videos are already videos that I've made too, um, you know, such as, you know, exploring like the different um, ways to love somebody, like according to the Greeks, um, you know, platonic versus romantic relationships. And he talks about typology sometimes. He talks about his faith at times. And the thing with Clay is that he used to be a Christian and he made a video about how he had walked away from Christianity. Um, and the first video was pretty much saying like why he isn't a Christian anymore. So one big thing about Clay is that he's not necessarily trying to disprove Christianity. He's just speaking for himself that this is why I just decided not to be a Christian anymore. And after he put out that video, several different people of all faiths, he said, started like, you know, like, tell, like berating him. Either they were like saying like, who are you to question God? Or they're trying to recruit him back in a way or they're saying, like, well, you were just never a Christian to begin with. Um, yeah. You never like actually like knew the stuff. So then now they're trying to like inform him um, of like, well, you misunderstood this and you misunderstood that. And he's like, no, guys, like, I, I get this. And he, so he put out a second video. He's like, no, guys, like, I get this. And I know that y'all think that I just never really been a Christian or whatever, but I'm telling you, I'm not one of those Christians who like, yeah, you know, I grew up in a Christian household and I didn't understand. Um, and so now I don't believe in Christianity anymore. Like I actually dug into this and I did this and I did that and I did that. And these things just, I guess it just didn't really click enough for me. And I can't make myself believe in something that I just simply don't believe in. And honestly, I think that's fair, you know, because that's where faith comes from. Um, so yeah, I had just me check out those videos. And when I first had watched it, then I, I had already been like having like a lot of similar questions because the second video was pretty much like, these are reasons as to like, these are not, he pretty much said, these are the most popular things that people tell me to try to prove Christianity to be real. And this is why these arguments don't necessarily work. Again, he's not one of those people that's going out there trying to say Christianity is dumb. Nobody should believe it. I think there's a big difference between somebody who's constantly like throwing rocks at Christianity and somebody who's like, oh, you know, like if that works for you, that's great. But yeah, I just, at least where I'm at right now, it just doesn't really work for me. And again, I want to say that's not where I'm at right now, but I want, but it, it brought up a lot of questions and there's so many other things that's happened in my life. Um, so many perspectives that I've gotten into that I could talk about forever. Um, but we'll probably be like weaving that into me and Justin's conversation. Um, and yeah, so I want to now finally lay out the floor for Justin. When you watched those videos, um, what were your thoughts? <laughs> um, that's a great question. I had several. I think the first thing when I was watching, it, I actually felt like crying and mm -hmm. not because um, I was like fearful. I think I was sad because you could just tell that he was really genuine and he like wanted to know. And for some reason it just did, it just didn't happen for him. And I think that always breaks my heart because I do, like you were saying earlier, I do think there are people who genuinely want to believe right. that Christianity specifically is the way to go. But for some reason they just don't get there. Um, so that was one thing. And the other thing that made me sad was if you watch the video, this all started like his whole, I guess, spiral into like questioning his belief all happened because what he was reading in the Bible and what he was seeing in churches were not the same. So part of me feels like as a Christian, um, I wasn't a part of his community, obviously, but kind of felt like we failed <laughs> like it, mm -hmm. he he took the time to read the scripture and he was a part of this churches where he felt like what he was seeing in the scripture and what was happening in the church was not the same mm -hmm. um so there's you know some 
lying there, I guess, some hypocrisy, like those types of things. Yeah. And then when he took the step to actually try to have conversations with pastors or other believers who have been in the faith for a while, his mm -hmm. questions were shut down. Mm -hmm. And that makes sense to me. Yeah. <laughs> because it just makes me feel like he actually went about it the right way. Like before he, it wasn't like one of those situations where he just got mad at the church and he just left. Like yeah. we, we see that, like that happens. Yeah. But he was an intellectual who was like, hey, like I'm not walking away. I just, can you help me figure this out? Like, can you help me reconcile these concepts? I have a question about this. I have a question about that. And it was, it was almost as like either people were afraid to answer his questions mm -hmm. or they just dismissed him. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, Oh, of course, <laughs> the obvious path now is to leave Christianity. And I, that just breaks my heart because I, I really, I really love Jesus. And so when I realized that like people are actually trying to like figure it out and I like, still walk away from because of example of people, that makes me mad. Now, please hear what I'm saying. I'm not putting the blame all on the church or all on those people because free will is a thing, right? Yeah. He has, he has the free will to walk away from Christianity and he has the free will to denounce whatever he wants to denounce. Mm -hmm. I just think as a community, I just want to make sure that we are doing our part in actually helping people walk this out. And mm -hmm. so to know that was not his experience is really heartbreaking. Yeah, yeah, I fully agree with that. I think that whenever we don't invite questioning, even with children, you know, like, oh, that's just, because that's just what it is. Like that's, you're, you're now, you're now almost creating like a cult. Um, <laughs> but yeah, and it, it, it might even sound dramatic, but like, it's true because one of the things that I've, I've noticed about Jehovah's Witnesses, for example, is that they are not allowed to read texts outside of what the Jehovah's Witnesses create. And that's mm -hmm. like, yeah, that's a big thing. So, cause they believe that, you know, they have this thing called like the apostates. And I talked about this a lot with uh, my other friend who, who used to be a Jehovah's Witness. Um, and now he's uh, like, he walked away from the faith, which is very difficult to do. Like now his, he doesn't pretty much like have contact with his family and stuff anymore. Cause it's that crazy. Um, um, but yeah, like we talked about it all in a uh, past video called the after party. Um, and he talked about like how they aren't allowed to like read like you know they're told like if you read these in any of the books that we that jehovah's witnesses themselves have not written then it's like pretty much like demonic and you know it's going to dissuade you in this way and this is this is that now what i realize is that especially understanding typology um introverted thinking also known as ti it's all about logical consistency and keep, like not really like having like errors and like it, even though um personality hacker they call it accuracy that doesn't necessarily mean that it's always accurate it's right. rather just like trying to build an internal framework of something that's gonna like you know uh not even like probably work in the real world but like just an understanding of stuff and nfjs and stps are the types that um have um TI as well as NTPs and SFJs. Uh, so, and you know, it's not to say that like other types can't ha like use that, but like these are the types they use like the most. Um, and so me being a TI user, despite it being like an inferior function, I can understand how there is this element now, um, which I didn't always understand before, but just because you build a whole case for something and it's airtight and it can hold itself up, again, does not mean that it's right. Mm -hmm. So when you look at the Jehovah's Witness um, uh, ideology, for example, they have this like whole faith and everything and it's like, like, and it's airtight and it could potentially hold itself up. But again, that doesn't mean that it's right. Same thing when you look at the Islamic faith, it could hold itself up like, you know, okay. Um, and I guess we'll talk about that in a little bit too, but like, you know, it could hold itself up but that doesn't mean that it's right. And even when it comes to Christianity, which I know could trigger like a lot of people, but that's how it comes up. Like, that's how it could be like, you know, Christianity in itself could hold itself up, but that doesn't 100% mean that it's right. And that's again, not me saying that it's not right, 
That's right. just saying that just because it can hold itself up does not mean that it's right. Um, so when I look at someone like Ravi Zacharias, who once again made a video about him, I made two. I made a tribute to him when he died, um, putting like some of my favorite uh, clips of his, of him like answering questions, defending Christianity, because I believe that he used TI so well. Like, yeah. And, and I, the way that I thought of him, um, I believe that he's an ISTP. So like I saw him, I, I distinctly remember telling Jamila um, that man, the day that this man says that he's no longer a Christian is the day that I'm going to seriously question my faith <laughs> because yeah. that means he found something out that I don't know. <laughs> and, and, yeah, exactly. And he's the person that I would always go to, like, you know, if somebody else comes to me and they say like, oh, well, what about this? I'll be real with them. Like, honestly, I don't know. That's a really good question. But just because I don't know doesn't mean that there's not an answer for it. Let me go see what my man's Robbie has to say about it. And I'll go and look it up. And he has this very elaborate, eloquent answer. And I'm like, oh, that's what it is. And it helps strengthen my faith because I want my faith to be founded on like, you know, logic, like strong logic, you know? Um, but then he died and all of these things came out about him. Like, okay, he, uh, well, he had stuff involving sex trafficking and having sex with several different women and not just having sex with them, but like even low key, like, like you know, um, raping them in a way. And it's just like, it was just horrible. Um, and that made me start to wonder like, okay, a few things could be going on over here. Yeah. Either he really did believe in God and everything and everything that he spoke about, but he just struggled that much with it, like, you know, with this thing that, you know, he maybe went to God all the time and was like, God, please help me. Like, this is difficult. This is hard, <laughs> literally, you know, like, and it's just like, I, I need help here. <laughs> um, and, you know, God was trying to help him. Maybe it could have been, I think that it was horrible. Everything that we, he did, I don't want to like, I, I don't want to um, soften that. Yeah, I, yeah. It was absolutely horrible. Mm -hmm. Um, but I like that was the first thought that I had. Like, you know, all of us struggle, you know. Even Paul said, you know, I do the th why do I do the things that I do and I don't do the things that I don't want to like and I don't do the things that I want to do, but you know, it's sin in me type of thing. So that was like option one. I was like, or it could be option two, where he probably did not believe in God. Mm -hmm. Or maybe it came to a point where he's like, crap. I actually do see now how Christianity is not really what we think it is. Um, but I've freaking built my whole life on this. And if I come out and talk about how it's not really what it is, then I'm gonna lose a lot of money. And plus I'm seeing how it's helping so many people. People need this, something to believe in. And so I'm providing these people with hope and faith, even if I may not have it. But now, since I know that God is probably not real, or if he is real, it's not in the way that we understand because the Bible is flawed here and this is that, maybe I can get away with some stuff. Again, I, I don't know Ravi, I never met dude, but that was one of the things I started to think. And I was just like, I really, we will never know for sure where his heart was really at, but that's what made me start like thinking like, what did, what, how could somebody who wielded that so strong, like still just fall so strong in that way. Yeah. Um, and yeah, that's what made me start then to like question, you know, like myself, like, okay, so if Ravi had all of that going on, of course, my faith shouldn't be hinged upon someone. He's not like my savior or anything like that. But now it's like, okay, well, how do I answer a lot of the questions that I don't really know? Um, and because for me, I'm all about truth. Mm -hmm. So I, I want to know the truth about a situation. Like if, if somebody presents to me valid reasoning that, yo, Islam is actually the truth. It's the true faith, whatever, whatever. All right, you got me. I'm going to go with that. I'm going to own up to be like, oh, thanks for giving me truth. Boom. If somebody provides that Buddhism is okay. You know, whatever it might be. I'm not about 
like, no, I'm going to stick with this no matter what. It's more about like, I want to go with the truth of something. Um, and so all that being brought up, Christianity can hold itself up mm-hmm. logically. But when it comes to like, you know, the actual truth and the reality of the situation, can it really do that? That's where like sometimes like um, now I, I like struggle because I've looked into certain things like, you know, even like the book of Enoch that I grew up believing that, oh, it's a demonic book and you shouldn't read about it. And then next thing you know, like scholars are saying one thing, but then the, like, this is what, what else I'm hearing. And now I'm even like seeing things about how like there was a mistake and now they're actually like, like some, some discovery came up and they're trying to weave in the book of Enoch into the Bible now. Um, and it's like, wait, so do we make a mistake in how canon was decided? And if so, why did God allow that mistake to happen? Again, logic, like Christianity can hold itself up. Okay, God has his, his own perfect reasoning for all of that and why this is orchestrated and boom, boom, boom. Just like if, you know, um, we are to, again, like believe in the Christian faith, people who believe in other faiths, we could say, oh, that makes sense because Satan has deceived them. You know, <laughs> Satan. <laughs> Yeah, like, like, you know, and that's what Jehovah's Witnesses tell their people. Jehovah's Witnesses tell them, like, yeah, all of that other stuff that you hear, even from the Christians, Satan has deceived them. And so that's how you can just dismiss it before you're even able to really analyze it. So my thing where I'm at right now is like, okay, I can hold this kind of screw tape letters view, screw tape letters for those who don't know, it's by C.S. Lewis. He made a book where he got into the head of a demon who was writing letters to his um, demon nephew to teach him how to be an expert demon. And that that book is crazy. In fact, I actually have it uh, right here. It's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and it's 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 so good um, because he's like, you're pretty much like seeing like, okay, if again, Christianity is real, it can hold itself up because it's like, it'll say things like, dear, my, my dearest Wormwood, you know, this is the demon writing to his demon nephew. Like, so I see that your host Denzel has now started looking into philosophy and all of these other things that have nothing to do with Christianity. Good. Keep him on that road. Allow him to be deceived by this and that and that. Allow him to do this and to think that he's actually in, like getting this knowledge and boom, boom, boom. But in actuality, we're driving him away from the truth, which is Christ and boom, boom, boom. So I can hold that view, but then I could also hold the view, or maybe that's not really how things are. Maybe that's just how the church has interpreted spirituality. Maybe that's how this is interpreted that, and boom, boom. And I'm being narrow-minded and seeing things in this way, kind of like how the Jehovah's Witnesses are fully believed, like fully believe that everybody else, including us Christians, are deceived and Mormons believe everybody else, including Christians are deceived and Islamic people believe that everybody else, including Christians are deceived. It's like, I don't wanna be deceived (laughs) by anybody. I just kind of wanna know the best truth, even if that means not like, even if that means like having an openness to leaving Christianity. Mm -hmm. But again, that's not my goal to leave Christianity. So yeah, again, this is like a lot of unpacking that I'm doing because this is the first time that I've spoken about this publicly. So that's why I'm doing a lot of talking and I wanted like to be really specific where I'm at, at least right now, um, throughout this conversation, but yeah. So I have a lot of thoughts. <laughs> Clearly um, I did, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, it's fine, it's fine. Um, I'm trying to think where I want to start. I'll, Mm-mm. okay. Um, I think this phase that you're in is not a bad thing. And I think if we're not careful, we can make people feel who are going through this thing uh, ashamed. Mm -hmm. And I think the whole like deconstructing faith is really like a thing right now within just like, I guess, American society, because I can't really speak for the rest of the world. This concept of I was raised Christian and now I'm questioning the way that I was raised. So now I'm therefore questioning the things that I've been taught. That's a very normal process. 
Um, and so I think I'm just kind of at this stage now where I, I trust Jesus enough to, if he is the truth, he's going to reveal himself to me mm-hmm. and he's going to let me know those things. And that's kind of where I am right now. Cause I used to be like, a I don't think I was necessarily afraid, but I didn't want to come out as like, Oh, like if I have a question about like in the end times is like the rapture real, then people are going to look at me like, Oh, I'm not a believer. And I'm like, anybody knows me like, no, that's the furthest thing from the truth. But I think giving people the, the space and the safety to ask questions mm-hmm. is needed. Yeah. It's needed. And I don't think that's a bad thing. You know, I don't want to quote scripture because I feel like that's kind of weird right now. But like God calls us to love him with not just our heart, but with our minds. Mm-hmm. Right? And so like, how do we love God effectively with our minds if we're not thinking about these hard questions? Mm-hmm. I feel we, like, like we have to do that exactly. and I, I just don't think it's a bad thing and I hope no one has you know made you feel some type of way because you're questioning all these things because I think it's actually healthy um I think this type of phase in our lives can do one or two things either it will push us more towards Christ like more towards the truth mm-hmm. or it won't and yeah. I just we got to be okay with that like we have yeah. to be okay and one of the things that I'm, I'm learning right now is that um, free will is a thing. Oh, like yeah. it's absolutely a thing. Yeah. And so um, we have to take that into account. What do I mean by that? Like you could leave this conversation, Denzel, and be like, you know what? It's okay. I, you know, I've, I've been a Christian. I've studied all these things and I'm just not with it. Like you actually have that option. Right. Um, so I think we just need to be a little more careful when we're, we're having these conversations because I, like I said, I think there are a lot of genuine people who want to figure this whole life thing out, to figure this whole truth thing out. But since we can't answer their questions or we're afraid to answer their questions, we're actually pulling people further. Yeah. Like you, yeah, we would be like inviting those questions mm-hmm. and like wanting them to like, let's have this conversation or say, hey, guess what? I have not a clue. Yeah. Figure this out. As opposed to be like, oh, you just got to believe and oh, you just got to have faith. That doesn't work anymore. That's what I wanted to say. Yeah. A generation or I guess a more, more so time period where it's simply saying God said so is not an argument anymore. Right. It is not an argument anymore. And and I'm saying that from someone who loves God and, and I identify as a Christian, like just simply saying the Bible says so mm-hmm. and God says so and that this is just the way it is, is irrelevant now. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Because that's just not going to work on our generation. Our generation needs to see hardcore evidence. Our generation needs to see like, okay, you're telling me Christianity is the way to go. Why? Like, why is it better for me to be a Christian as opposed to an atheist, as opposed to a Muslim, as opposed to a Buddhist? Like, tell me why. And yeah. I need hardcore evidence. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Like, I don't think, and this is just me. I don't think faith and reason have to be at odds. Me neither. I don't yeah. think they have to be. Um, and we talk about faith all the time and, and we'll even use scripture, you know, now faith is the substance of things hoped for the evidence of things not seen. And we don't actually know what that means. <laughs> then we'll say it faster. Like no, things hoped for the evidence of things. like, we'll say it faster as if it's supposed to make sense the second time. And it's like, no, like, like, what does that mean? And so I think about Hebrews, right. Cause that's where that comes from. Mm. I think about the, the stories that, Hebrews mentioned and like oh because Hebrews is kind of known as like the hall of faith chapter I think it's Hebrews 11 Mm. 11 I believe so like why is Noah in in the hall of faith Mm. well we learn okay if faith is the substance of things hoped for the evidence evidence of things not seen okay why is Noah in there okay well at that particular time if you read the story Mm -hmm. it had never rained on the earth right um, at that particular time, uh, God like like raised dew from the ground, but like rain had not ever fell from heaven. Mm. Right. So why is Noah considered someone of faith? Is because he literally built a boat for a situation he had never quite literally not seen. Mm. You see mm. what I'm saying? So mm. like, how does that tie in? Like, okay. That's so nice. I think a better definition. This is probably either Tony Evans or Darius Daniels. Wow. They describe, I know he's, he's phenomenal. Uh, they describe faith as believing and behaving as if God is telling the truth, mm-hmm. which I feel like is a lot, makes a lot more sense mm-hmm. when you start to think about the story of Noah. Right. 
Noah did not know what rain was, but he knew if God instructed him to do something, it was because God was going to do it. So it's like, oh, it's faith because Noah had never seen rain, but yet God told him to build a boat. So he built the boat. Mm. And then we realized, oh, it was faith because it rained, mm -hmm. but, but Noah didn't know, For what sure. it was, but he still built the boat. Right. So I don't, yeah. I think that's very different mm -hmm. than someone deciding to jump off a bridge because they believe they can fly. Mm. <laughs> it still works. Yes. <laughs> so I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't count that as faith. Cause I think we don't really describe faith, I guess, in my opinion, in a more, uh, biblically accurate way. I don't think faith means make irrational decisions. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I think, I think faith can mean doing things that from our perspective don't make sense, mm -hmm. but I wouldn't necessarily equate that with irrational mm -hmm. jumping off of a bridge because you believe you can fly is irrational because of gravity. Right. Right. But in Noah's case, he built the boat because he knew God was going to do what he said he was going to do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You see, that, I feel like that's totally two different things. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I makes sense. That makes 100% sense. That make, I love the Noah example like that. That was really good because yeah, it's like he didn't do something that was just complete, like without reason um, mm -hmm. or like defied logic in mm -hmm. some way, shape or form. He's like, okay, I was told this by God. Mm -hmm. And even if uh, people apparently like laughed at him about it too, but he's like, you know what? Uh, I don't know what day it is, but he told me and he gave, he even gave me the instructions on how to build this ark. He probably didn't really know like what to do. You know, like he, he probably never really tried to build a, uh, anything before. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe he was a carpenter. I don't know. But I know that that's the biggest thing that he's probably ever built. And then on top of that, to go out and get like two of every animal, and like these very like specific instructions, that takes a lot of faith. Yeah. But he's like, hey, something, something like enough was like told to him to like do that. And then he probably wasn't 100% certain that this is gonna happen right. until it did happen. And then that's when his faith probably like went up. Like, can you imagine if you were Noah in that time? And then it's like, whoa, God, it rained. I mean, I mean, I knew it was gonna rain, but like, oh shoot. Oh, I guess okay. Now, whenever you hear something from God, it's like, yeah, I'm gonna believe that. Same with Daniel. You know, like Daniel, he's like, he, there's a he's praying by his window every day, mm -hmm. and it's not even for show. It's just like this is where I'm supposed to, like, this is what I'm supposed to do. Whatever. Then, because people wanted to get him in trouble, then they they pass a law like, yo, you're not allowed to worship any god aside from the God that we're worshiping in town. And it's not Daniel's God. Yeah. Daniel still decides to openly worship in his window. Again, not even as a defiance, but just because this is just what I always do. And he had faith that God was going to protect him mm -hmm. regardless. Now, God did not protect him from getting arrested. Yeah. That's just facts. Yeah. But he, and God didn't even protect him from being thrown into the lion's den. But when he got in there, and I'm, I'm pretty sure that as he was being thrown in, I have a hard time believing that Daniel had 100% faith that God was not going to let him get mauled and eaten by those lions. Yeah. I think that maybe he had just made peace with, you know what, I know God, I have enough of a relationship with him that even if he allows me to die right now, kind of like what you said to Tony Evans said, like, I'm gonna believe that God not only knows what's best for me, but wants what's best for me. And then therefore I'm going to just allow myself to be that. And then, you know, we see how the, the story ended there. The lines, like they, they, they uh, opened it up, like I think a day or two later. Um, and they saw that Daniel was pretty much petting the lions. They're yeah. like, yo, what? And that made everybody in the town, including the king, believe Daniel's faith probably like sprung up even more. And then the people who tried to get Daniel in trouble, they threw them into the lions then. And the lions, it's, the Bible says that before they even fell to the bottom of the pit, the lions had already torn them apart. So it's like, there was clearly something at war. And then the last thing, all from the Old Testament is like, you know, the Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Um, That's what to bring up next. Yeah. Like, straight up said, Denzel, even if God does not. <laughs> mm -hmm. Exactly. Will not bow. And I think we don't talk about that. Yeah. And yeah. 
where I'm at right now in cur currently my Christ Christian walk is um, really assessing what I believe about God. Mm. Um, and because I think the subjects of theology is really important. Oh yeah, for sure. Um, and remind me, I'll come back to that. But specifically with that situation, mm -hmm. um, there is no way <laughs> you could convince me that we have an accurate understanding of the Bible in terms of modern day Christianity, maybe specifically American Christianity, mm. um, because those boys literally said, <laughs> you can throw us in the fire. Right. And we still won't bow. God right. has the ability to deliver us from this fire. Mm -hmm. He may not, and we're okay with that. Yes. That concept mm -hmm. is totally foreign yeah the american church today i personally believe yeah because i think we don't have an accurate view of christianity mm -hmm. um so what do i mean i think because we're so uh and maybe this is maybe this is just an american thing so i could so i can't really speak to christianity in other parts of the world mm -hmm. but like we're so built on like comfort and stuff and like what is the highest level of like comfortability, satisfaction, all these other things. So that whole concept of they were willing to die and like not even question God's character. Mm -hmm. it, I feel like it's something that's truly countercultural. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. that, like that doesn't make sense to America. Like why, why? Cause that would, that would be the very reason why some people will walk away from the faith simply because he did not deliver them from persecution. Yeah. Exactly. I just think, I think those types of things are the things we have to talk about. Mm -hmm. Being a Christian does not mean life of ease. It does not mean that you're going to get every job that you apply for. It doesn't mean that you are not going to suffer from depression. It does not mean that you're not going to suffer from cancer, like these different things. And so I just think part of the confusion I feel like people have mm -hmm. is because we don't have an accurate view of God. Mm -hmm. And I noticed that in my own life. Um, my junior year, I went through this uh, deep, really just deep depression for um, a plethora of reasons, but it affected like different areas of my life. And I realized um, I've been saved for a while, but I think um, my relationship with God took like a whole nother like turn or like, I guess a deeper direction, like when I went to college, which, you know, they tell us that always happens, right? It, it, it's just a thing. Um, especially if you were raised in a Christian home, you're going to go to college and your faith is going to get tested. Either you're going to stay with Jesus or you're going to walk away. It's just kind of how it, it's kind of how it goes. You went to a Christian college at that and still. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so I noticed there were th like, I have never been in a place in my relationship with God where I actually felt like I could not talk to him. Mm -hmm. I've been in the, I've been in spaces where I've just been mad at God and I just chose not to. But I've never been in a place until my junior year where I felt like I actually like could not talk to God. Mm -hmm. um, and at that moment, I realized, okay, so something's wrong. Either I don't have an accurate understanding of God or he's just not real. Mm -hmm. And I couldn't really be convinced of the latter. So I was like, okay, so am I understanding, Chris, like, am I understanding my own beliefs correctly? And so that's really when I started um, searching. I went to uh, therapy. I went to a Christian therapist because that was really important to me. Um, and she introduced this concept of cognitive behavioral therapy to me. Oh, yeah. And I realized, first of all, I love that. But yeah. I realized there were actually a lot of misconceptions that I had in my brain, uh, or I guess in my mind, that was actually living out. And so like part of the reason why I struggled with depression, because depression was a literal manifestation of like some of the lies I had been leaving in my head. Mm -hmm. So once I realized that what you think like truly affects your life, I was like, oh, shoot. So what are some things that I'm believing about God that are actually not consistent with scripture? Right. So that kind of catapulted me into um, this journey where I've been um, reading scripture um, and trying to figure out, okay, so if I know this, this, this about God, are these things actually congruent with God, with what God said about himself in scripture? Mm. And so it's been really cool um, because I think it's not even that my theology has changed necessarily, but more so I have a better understanding. So when I approach issues, like for instance, um, if you are a Christian and you 
adhere to the Bible and like read what it says and believe that it's true. The first thing we learn about God is that one, he is a creator and then two, that he's good. Mm. So how does that, how do those two things now affect the way that I see the world? Mm. Like how, how do those things affect the way that I see myself? And also how those, how do those two things affect the way that I see him? Yeah. Right. So now I have this theology. Okay. So now I would say my theology is all based upon the goodness of God. So like if I read anything in scripture, one, I'm going to ask myself, okay, does this contradict what I already believe about God? Why? Mm. Right. And based off of those two things, God is created, God is good. How does that fit in? Mm. Um, and the reason why I say that is because I think um, at the end of the day, people have to wrestle with those questions. If there is a God, is he good? Mm. And I just think, unfortunately, people just come to different conclusions yeah. because I, I just feel like... Um, and that could be for a plethora of reasons. I'm noticing that like pain can help us not see God clearly. Oh yeah. Um, ignorance and not just like, oh, you're stupid, but like a pure lack of knowledge or understanding can help us from seeing God correctly. Mm -hmm. And so for me, I'm really bent on understanding. I'm really bent on logic. So I want to make sure that um, my understanding is correct. And so that means like asking a lot of hard questions, um, asking why these things happened and I don't know. I think once I kind of settled that, that God is good, mm -hmm. it kind of helped me um, filter out some of these other things. And what I'm noticing, there's so many things in the Bible that we just don't talk about. I don't know why we don't talk about them. Uh -huh. Especially the Old Testament. I love, I love the Old Testament. There's so many things. I'm like, so in Sunday school, we just, we just not going to address this. <laughs> we're not going to address this. We're not, we're not going to talk about this. Uh -huh. um, but yeah, I'm, what I'm doing is I'm trying to, I don't even know if these are answering any of your questions, but I'm just telling no, you. No, no, I'm loving it. Go ahead. Okay. Yeah. I'm sorry, um, but I'm, I'm learning. I feel like, I'll just speak for myself. I have to do a better job of separating what is God mm. and what, what is people. Mm. Because mm. there are a lot of things in the Bible that are like, you we, we're just not going to talk about how the, he just mass murdered all those people. Like we're just not going to talk about that. And it's, it's so interesting because I think it was Darius Daniels to talk about there are things in the Bible that are um, prescriptive and descriptive. Mm. That was a really interesting take on that because you'll read some things that are like, this, this is kind of bad. And it's like, <laughs> God, did God like say this was okay? Like, was this like, was this, this is how we're supposed to live. And there's some situations like, no, like this is just literally a historical count of what happened. Like it's nowhere in the text that God told them to do that. They just did it. And like, this is what happened. And so just learning how to not necessarily just reconcile, but just wrestle through some of these things. I think it's, it's given me a greater appreciation of one owning a Bible for myself because oh yeah, uh, uh, the saints, the saints can be weird. <laughs> um, and then two, just giving God the benefit of the doubt. Mm. what do I mean by that mm. not that he necessarily um deserves it in the same way like like me and you do but what I'm saying is if God is all that he says he is in scripture then his goodness does not change yes his love does not change his mercy even his justice does not change mm-hmm so if there's, if I run into something in scripture, my first question should be, am I understanding this correctly? Right. You know, instead of assuming God's a bad guy. Right. Because he's not, mm -hmm. he's not a bad guy. And it's, it's, it just breaks my heart because I know there are a lot of people walking away from the faith um, simply because they don't understand um, God correctly and not even because they're not trying to but I think the what I'm what I'm trying to say is theology is really important if you paint God as a bad guy and then try to read scripture you're only going to see him as a bad guy yeah. it doesn't matter what he says about himself it doesn't matter what prophets say about him it doesn't matter what people say about him you've mm -hmm. already did, made up in your mind that he's bad yeah so it's actually easier to believe that God doesn't exist because if he does he's a bad guy right yeah and the implications of that are poof, are terrible yeah. but I, if we actually go into reading the bible first of all assuming that we actually don't know anything and kind of let the bible kind of speak for itself and like when god says he is good actually believe him i mm -hmm. think 
we'll just end up learning a lot more. Yeah. So that's one, that's one caveat. Well, yeah. not caveat. Well, that's one category. Mm-hmm. I think when it comes down to Ravi, I still haven't processed that. Yeah, I'm right. Um, really hard because I don't know if this is like the one wing two in me, the INFJ, the whatever else typology I am, because mm-hmm. I don't know all of that. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's like, how can you be so smart <laughs> and and not and not live by what you say? And it's so interesting because essentially we all have to ask ourselves those questions. And mm-hmm. I don't, you said something earlier that I thought was really interesting. You said, did he like not believe um, the things that he was saying? Yeah, but he wanted to maybe just keep up his money and provide for his family, yeah. this is that. And he knew that we need something to believe in. Like, even like what you were just saying, I was kind of like writing it down. Um, and keep your thought, it's just a little thing to throw in there. Yeah. Um, you said like, you know, if people have this notion like God is a bad guy and then they go and read scripture, all they're gonna see is his bad. Um, but instead you, you would advise like, okay, choose to believe that, you know, God is a good guy and believe him. But then playing devil's advocate, mm-hmm. somebody might ask, but why should I believe that? You know, yeah. and like, you know, like, like what is he really like proven like so i'm just supposed to like believe like like okay god is good oh well what makes god good well he said it in the bible that he's good okay so if the bible is on trial right and he says hey i'm innocent then Mm -hmm. we're just supposed to be okay well yeah he's innocent it's like yeah 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 (laughs) Yeah, we'll come back to that um with ravi um i don't know him so I can't really speak to where he was, but I think another perspective could be, mm-hmm. what if, I'm just, sorry, I'm trying to figure out how I'm gonna phrase this. Mm-hmm. What if with Ravi, it's, it's kind of like combining the, the two options that you had and like- And I do it. Like, so what if it's not that he didn't necessarily want to stop because he was making all this money? It could be. It really, really could be. I don't know him. But what if it was, it was one of those situations where he had all of this head knowledge, but did not even rely on the Holy Spirit that he talked about so much to help him with his struggles? Oh, yeah. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? So it may not necessarily be, and it could be, because we know, well, once again, Brother Scripture, that the love of money is the root of all the evil, right? Mm-hmm. So that that's an actual thing. Mm-hmm. But even, not even, I don't want to say giving him the benefit of the doubt, because I'm not excusing anything that he did. I think with all people, there are Christians who believe in God, and this happens all the time. And mm-hmm. could it be, like, when it came down to um, self-control, because, right, that's one of the fruit of the Spirit, he didn't ask God for help in, in the area of self-control. Mm-hmm. And so therefore, or he believed that the scripture just didn't apply to him in that area. Like I do, I do think it was some, it could be, cause that, that's with all people with sin. Like we know that lying is wrong and yet we still do it. Yeah. And could it be because either we don't see the benefit of telling the truth or we don't see why telling the truth is important or, um, yeah, there, there just could be a plethora. I do think anytime we struggle with sin, it really could be for one of two reasons. One, we have free will and we just choose to do it, right? Because once again, reading the Old Testament, you just like free will is a thing. Like it, it really. Yeah, David, David will tell you that. This man. Just, we have choices and we can honestly choose not to believe anything. We can choose to do whatever we want. We have that option. But I think for those who really want to, um walk with god it really could be one of those situations where um yeah it's i want to believe god but i don't actually believe that god can help me overcome this problem Mm -hmm. so if i have um let's say a lying issue and Mm -hmm. i just don't i know that god is truth and i know that god wants me to tell the truth but for whatever reason i feel like i'll never stop lying then there's kind of a uh you just gonna keep lying which once again i think goes back to how do you understand god right because if you don't believe that god can help you 
overcome your struggles, then you're you're not really gonna overcome your struggles. You see what I'm saying? Like I don't. Yeah, I it's, it's a lot. I hope I'm making sense because I realize I have a lot of thoughts and they just kind of. I'm, I'm I'm loving all of it. I'm loving all of it, and I'm sure the people who are watching slash listening are too, because these are again it's really candid stuff that we're talking about here like this is this is just truth so yeah it really it really comes down to mindset and what, what i'm realizing is there's we really i promise this is going to make sense we <laughs> have to um i'm learning to kind of relinquish control mm. and why do i say that i could sit here and i told you even before like our first initial conversation I was nervous to to talk about this, not because I'm ashamed of being a Christian, but because I know that, oh my goodness, I'm gonna start crying. That's crazy. Um, the world, and I guess I'm gonna stop saying the world because I, I can't speak for the world, but it, American culture mm-hmm. has been um, impacted by the church's downfalls. Mm-hmm. And a lot of people are opposed to Christianity, not even for big philosophical outside of our brain thinking, but simply because of the representation of Christians. And yeah. I did want to come on here and be the same type of guy. Oh, yeah. Because I know, I understand the implications of this conversation. If I say something wrong, it really could lead somebody away from Christ. Mm. And being someone who loves Christ and, and appreciates him, I don't want to be that guy. But at the same time, mm-hmm. I have to trust that if God loves everyone, which I believe he does, yes, he is going to make the truth known. Whether or not we believe it is up to us, but God loves you. God loves the people listening more than I do, right? And so if if God is the truth, if God is the way, he's going to make that known to you. So I have to trust the Holy Spirit and say, hey, like I might say something wrong, but you know where that person is in their life. And so I'm going to just let you correct it. Like, I think we need to come to an understanding that God is so much bigger than us. Mm -hmm. And so, like you said at the beginning, it is not my sole responsibility to answer all of Denzel's questions and make him uh, now go to uh, uh, philosophy school and like theology. Theology, what a, what a word, so, like, that was crazy. Um, and like answer all these questions. I just have to trust that like, hey, I'm gonna come and I'm gonna talk to my heart and I'm gonna tell you, not talk to my heart, talk from my heart, yeah. tell you where I am, the things that I'm even wrestling with and then trust the Holy Spirit to do his job. Like at that, and you have to be okay with that. And I, the one in me is like, no, like at the end of the day, I need an altar call. I need, I need people calling to tell and like confessing, you know, that <laughs> Jesus Christ is, but I don't, I actually don't need that anymore. Yeah. And I think there was a lot of pressure. And I think we talked about with like evangelism, like mm-hmm. to be like, oh, like yes. we, like people out here going to hell and like, we gotta, we gotta get them all in. And yeah. I, 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 approach matters one. Uh, but two, people have free will and we can, yeah. we can sit here and shout and scream all day. But at the end of the day, Jessamy Morris cannot make anybody believe anything. And so I'm kind of at the point where like we can have these conversations, but I know you're going to have to go and look it up for yourself. And I just pray that when you go and look it up for yourself, that the Holy Spirit would open your eyes to see just the truth of the gospel. And it's out of my hands. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. But as as a representative of Christ, Mm -hmm. I am supposed to be an example. And so I will take responsibility to make sure that I'm living a life that's actually congruent with what I say that I believe. Mm -hmm. That is my job, right? And if I think as Paul says, like always be ready to make, to give an account of like the hope you have in the gospel. So if somebody like were to ask me like, why do I believe? Like I need to be ready to answer that question. But when it comes down to, um, they're, I'm not responsible for somebody else's spiritual journey. Right. You yeah. see what I'm saying? I can only be uh, a light and I can really only to have conversations. Yeah. Like, that's, really, that's really all I can do. That's really just have conversations. Yeah, for sure. Um, um, but you talked about um, the goodness of God and why should people believe that? I think that's a good question. And I think 
what I'm noticing is even in our approach to apologetics and um, theology and religion, I think before, and I don't know, this might be blasphemous. I hope not. I think before, <laughs> right? I, I'm thinking out loud. I think before we even get to Jesus, I think people honestly just struggle is there a God? Mm-hmm. And so maybe instead of trying to start with Christianity, I think we need to have more honest conversation about does God even exist? Mm. Um, not, not necessarily for me, but I think like people who wrestle with all of these things. Yeah. Um, because if you don't even believe that God exists, then we're not going to have a very fruitful conversation about Christianity, <laughs> you know, because it's like, you don't even we don't even agree that something is out there. Yeah. You know what yeah. I'm saying? I'm not saying you can't have those conversations, but I think when it comes down to just evangelism, yeah, I think sometimes people just want to start with Jesus. And I'm not saying don't do that because as Christians, like we're supposed to talk about that. But I think if, if, if you're talking to someone who doesn't even believe in a God or some type of higher being, then we, we need to start there. Mm um and I and for me I just I just have a really hard time believing that all this happened by chance Mm -hmm. um that the world is is too complex which I'm laughing because I know that the guy talked about this um in the video but the complexity of the world is honestly too much for me for someone to say to me it just happened by chance got you man and i can look into that and i can it's just really hard Mm -hmm. it's just really hard for me to fathom um whether it's um big bang or um any other theory i'm not i'm not discrediting those what i'm saying is for me specifically the human body Mm -hmm. is too complex for someone to tell me that there is no type of intelligent design out there. Yeah. Um, we can, we can argue a lot, whether you believe in theist- theistic evolution, whether you believe that like God started the world and he just kind of left, like there's a lot we can, we can argue. Mm-hmm. But the fact that our bodies were literally designed to like heal themselves essentially, like that just, that just came out of a coincidence. Like, I, I think that's just really hard because essentially the world as we know it wouldn't have happened if all these little coincidences didn't happen. Mm-hmm. And it's just like, I just, it's really hard for me to reconcile that. Yeah. Um, and I, I can't know, you know, if, I realize no one actually knows how the earth began. We we can come up with theories and even in Christianity, like the seven days, like we, we got that. But I, at the end of the day, no one was there, right? So, and, and as a Christian who believes in the seven day creation, mm-hmm. I am the first to tell you, obviously I was not there. Yes, yeah. Right, so I do think there are some things that um, we, we just can't know, but the fact that it happened, I don't know, just kind of points me still, it still just kind of points me to something bigger than ourselves. Absolutely. Um, it's, it's just wild. Yeah. I, I think about, there's so many things I don't even understand. Oh yeah. So, you know, there's well. just, just and, and to know, not, sorry. humanity um all the different ethnicities like culture language like music dance like humanity is is so beautiful mm-hmm. and to just really just for someone to tell me that like we all had no purpose we were here by chance and it just in nothing none of it matters it's like so then so then why are we here 
you know, and it's, if it all happened by chance, like I think what we, we what we need to understand is like I think the implications of God not being real actually are far worse than if He was. Yeah. And and I say that because if God doesn't exist, then we have no hope for anything. Yeah. Um, and I think and and I know people talk about that all the time, but I. But as okay, so for instance, I told you I struggled with depression, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and I struggled with like suicidal thoughts and all those other things. Mm-hmm. And I remember in those moments where it, it was just kind of like, so what is what is keeping me from ending my life right now? Mm-hmm. You know, and I I don't mean to go like dark. I'm not sure why we went here. I'm so sorry. Mm-hmm. But I think in those in those moments, it was just kind of like, truly, like what, what is keeping me here? Mm-hmm. If if I have, if I'm doing something wrong, if I have, if I don't have a purpose or my life is just meaningless as like a lot of people like to say that um, don't believe in God or even believe in God, but like it doesn't really matter type of situation. What What is stopping me from ending my life? Mm-hmm. And I think... Um, with my journey with depression I'm not going to speak for everybody and my struggle with with suicide I kind of came to a point where it's like I might not understand everything that's happening right now mm-hmm. but I cannot be convinced that I'm not loved mm-hmm. and I cannot be convinced that my life means absolutely nothing And at that point, I wasn't even sure how I felt about God. And I think it's so interesting because I think the the conversations of purpose and identity are just so innate to us. Like, and I don't mean to be like this guy, but it's like, okay, so if we don't matter, why are we fighting for justice? Why are we fighting for, um, to end like sex trafficking? Why are we fighting to find like cures for cancer? Like if, if we don't have meaning in life, why are we fighting for all these things? Because essentially it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if I come and steal your car. It doesn't matter if um, you go to school or you don't. Like none of these things matter. So like, what are we doing? Like, why do we feel like we even have to have a purpose if we're not supposed to have a purpose, you know? And I'm not saying that people have not come up with really good answers to those things. Mm-hmm. But I'm saying just kind of where I am, it's just, it's just hard. It's, it's really hard for me to kind of wrap my mind around some of these things. Sure. It's just like some of these answers and some of these kind of, kind of go against human dignity and like mm-hmm. human life. And it's just like, I just, I don't, I don't know how you got here and I'm trying and I, because I, I like to think, right? I I actually do enjoy like thinking deeply and trying to, I love philosophy and I love like the higher stuff. Like I really do. And I I love psychology. Um, And so like, I'm really on this like, okay, so how does like correct theology now influence the way that I think about everything else, right? So like, how does my understanding of God affect the way that I see myself? And then like, how does my understanding of God affect the way that I see people and like treat people like, like all these other things like I really like to think about okay so like uh I can't think of an example right now but the point is I I really do wrestle with these things because I enjoy these things mm-hmm. like I enjoy thinking about the deeper things of life like truly and I just I've heard a lot of conversations from a lot of different ends and I just I think it's really important to understand the implications of what we're saying and I don't want to be like that guy that's like, you're wrong. It's just, I just don't, I just don't understand how we can basically come up with ideologies and philosophies that tell me that my existence doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's, it's hard. It's, no. it's just hard. Because then there's really no point to anything. Mm-hmm. And I think that's a, that's a really hard, uh, belief 
to then live out because then there's no point for me to go to work. <laughs> like there's, there's no point for me to exist really. And I, and I think and my heart always goes out to, to kids and teens and even adults who struggle with depression and suicide one, cause I've been there. Um, but I will say going back to my beliefs about Christianity, cause it's like, God, God didn't make you to, to believe that you had no purpose. Mm-hmm. Like it, but at the same time, it's like, if you, if you live in a society that tells you you don't, or you have to be a certain kind of way to matter and you don't fit within that thing, then the next logical, and I hate to say this, like, but the next logical step was, would to be to end your life. If, if someone, I'm not even gonna say Satan, I'm just gonna say someone yeah. can convince you that you don't matter mm-hmm. and that your life absolutely has no purpose and your existence won't mean a thing the next logical step is to end your life like i don't i i wish no one would do that and, and suicide has has affected millions of families so please here i'm not condoning that please it like right. that's not what i'm saying but you can understand from the from the perspective of if i have nothing to live for so what's the next thing i'm going to do like that's that's a logical sequence yeah and so i just there has to be more to life than that. And and maybe I'm just crazy for thinking it's found in Jesus Christ. Um, and maybe uh, some people might think I'm insane. Like, And that's cool. Mm-hmm. I mean, you can. Like, you have the free will to think that, <laughs> you yeah. know? Um, but I just, I don't know. And I really hope my heart is being heard. Because my heart, I can struggle with words sometimes, but I just... You're doing great. <laughs> it's it's so heartbreaking, like truly. It's and you know, God only told us to do two things love him and love people. And even though like I don't have connection with, you know, the entire world, obviously, it just breaks my heart to see people going through so much and then just like not having any kind of hope. And so they do things to harm themselves and even might even take their own life. And then we have people basically coming up with philosophy to say it didn't matter anyway, because essentially you're, you're, you're saying that people's pain don't matter mm-hmm. or people's struggles don't matter. I mean, these are, these are the implications of some of these philosophies that we're coming up with. Mm-hmm. And I think even within, um, Christian circles, I see a lot of people walking away from Christianity because um, they think that God doesn't care about some of the things that they care about. Um, And that's not the case. I think we just have bad examples in humanity. (laughs) Uh, um, And that's not to say that God doesn't have standards. That's not to say that God doesn't have things that he would like for us to do but like at the core of it all like it's it's just god cares he really does and i just i don't know i'm not sure what just happened but i that was just i'm sorry anyway and um yeah i think at the end of the day i call me crazy I would rather believe in God and die and realize that it was a hoax Mm -hmm. than to live a life without God and not try, at least trying to understand him and then die and feel like it was real. Yeah. You know, and and honestly, Denzel, at the end of the day, I really just devoted my entire life to trying. Yeah, exactly. You know, it's, it's really about the effort. Yeah, yeah. And I understand that I will never have all the answers and mm-hmm. I'm okay with that. Mm-hmm. But at the end of the day, I'm, I'm going to put forth the effort and you don't have to. And then what I'm telling you, <laughs> you, if that's okay. Like if you make the decision not to put forth the effort, God mm-hmm. bless. You. Like truly, like God, God gave us free will and I really wish people could understand that mm-hmm. because I feel like if we really just understood even and even if you don't believe in God, 
people can agree that we all have choices to make. Like, like choices are a real thing, whether you believe that God gave them to you or not. Like, that's just a thing. Mm-hmm. And I, so I think that's really um, calmed me down a lot because I'm also realizing I'm only responsible for my choices. Yes, and that's a big I'm not, I'm not responsible for your choices. I'm not, not responsible for other people's choices. And so you you can you can you can live a life without without god like you you can like and i guess not to say that as christians we don't ever stop evangelizing but i think there is a point where we need to understand if people make the decision not to accept jesus christ let them yes and i don't mean and i don't mean like hate them i don't mean if you ever you stop having conversations with them, I'm simply saying at the end of the day, the entire world will not accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. That does not mean we stop having conversations. That does not mean that we stop trying to share the gospel. Mm-hmm. But what that means, I think it kind of takes some pressure off mm-hmm. because at the end of the day, that individual is going to have to make the decision. I think what I just want Christians to know, make sure that we're actually living lives that actually lead them towards Christ instead of away from. Mm-hmm. And then two, just being there and just walking with them. Yeah. I think that's all I want us to do. And let's also make sure that we're equipped because I'm about to get upset. <laughs> but I think sometimes we're not honest in saying we don't know all the answers. Yeah. That's um, and that's going to turn people off. Yes. Truly. So that's the first thing. Secondly, I don't think, um, even kind of going back to the honest thing, I think if we kind of admitted and acknowledged our mistakes, there would at least be some more respect there. Mm-hmm. Um, which is a whole different conversation. And I think if we actually take, took the time to like research and study and not just rely on the pastor to tell us everything, um, if we actually loved God with our own minds, mm. right, and taking the time to study uh, whatever it may be, mm-hmm. I think we'll be better equipped to walk with people who may struggle. Yeah. But not to throw off on the church because I think it's also really easy for me to get in the space to just kind of point out everything that's wrong. Um, Because on the flip side of that, at the end of the day, the individual has to decide, am I going to look into this Jesus guy Mm -hmm. for myself? Right. And not necessarily go based off of what people are saying about him. And Mm -hmm. I do think that's a, that's a distinction that like we have to make. And I, and I've even been in that space because I've been in scenarios and situations where, um, a lot of people have either been telling me, oh, like God said this, or like God did that. And like, they were telling me things about Jesus Mm -hmm. and I kind of had to come to a point where it's like that's cool but if what you're saying to me is not congruent in the text I'm gonna just I'm gonna just respectfully let that go Mm -hmm. um and that came from a desire to actually to know what it says for myself right and I do think whoever you are you cannot go based off of the church um, because church is made up of people and people are flawed, yes. right? So I'm not, I'm not here to bash the church. I'm not here to even bash Christianity. I'm honest in saying we have not handled everything correctly because we're humans. Yeah. And I will say that. Um, but at the same time, I think sometimes people who don't want to believe in God or believe in Christian or whatever, the first thing they're going to do is look at the church mm-hmm. and say, oh, they're not doing this or that. But people are flawed and I it's sometimes it feels like from it feels like people are already just trying to come up with excuses just not to believe in God oh the church is flawed the church has not handled some things correctly so therefore it's not true it's like no (laughs) it's like (laughs) like it's I understand that how you can get that mentality but just be honest and say I don't want to believe in God because I don't like his people right just say that yeah don't don't just say that 
you know yeah. and so i really say if everybody would just be honest you know about where they're at mm -hmm. i just feel like a lot of things would just do a lot more smoothly yes. smoothly and if you're if you say to me i don't believe in god because of christians i'm gonna say okay so and that's cool but i want you to actually look into like jesus and what he said himself and then and then let's have a conversation right because at, at some point you're going to have to decide, is that going to stop me from getting to know God for myself? Yeah. And if the answer is yes, that's cool. I just don't think that's a, it's not that it's not a valid excuse, but I need you to have a, another one. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, I need you, I need you to have a different excuse because I think, and don't get me wrong, I understand where the mentality comes from, mm -hmm. you know? Because Christians, you know, we say we have the way and like, this is how we're supposed to be. And then like, we're not always operating in what we say we believe. Yeah. I understand that's confusing. I really do. Yeah. Uh, I think it's first John who talks about like, if we say one thing and do it another, like we're liars. So oh. I understand. <laughs> I understand the confusion. Yeah. Know? Let me be clear. I just don't think that's not a, a good enough excuse not to get to know Jesus for yourself. Right. Yes. Yes. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> Yes, totally. And I think, and I do think that the church has a lot of stuff to work on. I really do. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, I'm just kind of at a point where I'm really not listening to a lot of people. I'm, I'm really just in my word for myself and I'm asking questions and I'm researching and you just have to do that for yourself. Mm -hmm. And right now, I think that Jesus is absolutely worth it. But at the end of the day, you have to make that decision for yourself. And I can only be here to be like, this is kind of what I saw. I don't know, but this is kind of where I'm at. Yeah. So, yeah, I just, I don't know. It just really breaks my heart because I know it's, it's a lot on both ends. Mm -hmm. It's a lot on both ends. And I think for me, I just kind of let go of, yeah, just, just a lot of control and trying to control like the outcomes, like, Okay, so like if I share the gospel with this person like seven times, maybe that seven time they just nah. I can only tell you where I'm at, and if you don't come to the same conclusion to me, I just gotta. That's just what it is. That's just what it is. Like mm -hmm. I. Just, <sighs> yeah. It's so much. I absolutely love that stream of consciousness that you just went into. Thank you. I, absolutely love that because i i could sense how raw and like honest it was i could literally and it also like for me especially being like you know not only um into typology so understanding like oh wow like this is her ni and her fe and her ti like all working together in this way but then also like being the extroverted version of you it's like whoa, I definitely, she's having the exact same types of thoughts and like stream of consciousness that I do. And that's like very validating for me.